Let's turn these into these and these into these. So, we've done two videos on Battletech by now. As we're gearing up to do a third, something began to irk me. I've yet to play a single game of this with painted miniatures. I decided to change that, and as I have to put in the time and work anyways, I thought I might as well document it. Thoughts, struggles and methods. The hope being that if you see me struggle through this and put paint on things, maybe some of you out there will get the motivation out of it to pick up a brush as well. Because if I can do it, so can everybody. I will also briefly describe the things I'm doing while I'm doing them for the benefit of everyone watching who never painted a mini before. Brief disclaimer before we go in, I'm not what you'd call a pro painter. Just a guy who stubbornly refuses to let his stuff go unpainted. I've followed up on that throughout most of my hobbyist life, with a few exemptions. I mean, those look like army man toys, why would I ruin that? So, that's where my previous experience comes from. Painting games in one go to get them to the table as quickly as possible. But every game has slightly different miniatures, and every game wants a slightly different approach to painting as a result. And now we're already dipping into the preparation phase of painting Battletech stuff. Before we pick out colors or anything, we need to make some general decisions. Painting can be as meticulous or as surface level as you like. For my part, I'm a player first and a painter second. I usually like to paint things so they look good at arm's length, pretty enough for the table, but not meant to be put in a display case. After all, if I paint one model a week or so, it'll take forever to play anything with a fully painted set. I haven't yet painted any models that are quite the same style as these battle mechs though. Or have I? Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't. So I'll have to find out how to best approach them as we go along. Of course, you're one step ahead of me. You've already seen the finished models in the intro, I hope. I'll still have to paint them to find out what they're going to look like in the end. And I'll do that by taking one mech and doing a proof of concept. That way I won't have to redo the whole batch if I don't like where this is going. Afterwards I'll do the rest in one go. Color schemes. We have two groups of models here, and we have picked out an official color scheme for each of these. Our upcoming battle takes place out in the periphery. It will pitch the Taurian Concordat's Red Chasseurs, a group of mercenaries, against mysterious people in white mechs with no unit designations. That's Comstar. It's going to be Comstar. The four Taurian Concordat mechs will be black with flame decals on the right side. Seen that somewhere. Well, it is a commonly used look. But we'll start with six mysterious unmarked white mechs. Just gotta select the simplest design to start out with. And none of these are especially simple, are they? No, all right, I'll go with you. We don't want to start from a gray miniature though. We put on a white base coat via spray paint. Usually I work from a black base or a black base with gray highlights. But these are gonna be mostly white, so white coat it is. I'm gonna try and use Citadel White Scar for the sole reason that it was the only thing offered by my local hobby shop and support your local dealer and all that. I don't have the best memories of White Citadel base coat, but when I last used it, it was still called Cordex White, so who knows? Alright, paint is on the miniature, but it still needs to dry. So in the meantime, let's prep the other paints. I'm going to be using mostly Vallejo paints since, once again, 
that's what I can get locally. They used to sell Citadel paints previously, so they are what I'm used to, but I'm starting to adapt. Need a painting tray for these though. Perfect. Sadly, I don't have a painting desk. Thus, gaming table transform. can already see, hugging a camera whilst painting will take some getting used to. Okay, this is white now, but it is too white, right down into the crevices. So for starters, I'm gonna try and put some black wash on this. I've gotten some new Nolan oil to... There's probably some joke about stuff shrinking in the wash to be had here. Anyways. This is just bread and butter for every painter out there. Wash is paint that is thinned enough to seep into all the cracks, but isn't opaque enough to really cover up surfaces. It'll only tint them. Still, it'll gather up in some spots. So, it's best to dry your brush a little and scoop up the parts where it has gathered into little drops. Also, do all of this in one go, because once it has started drying, you'll be painting layers. Now we need to let it sit and dry, so we won't smush it or accidentally blend it with other paint going forwards. Let it dry for a good long while. And as I'm not a patient person, I let it sit and go do something else. Okay, back to my considerably darkened miniature. Black crevices, dirty grey surfaces. We don't want those. Now, I could have done something like painstakingly paint every surface in this white and later highlight every edge. But since it would already be white, how could I use a lighter color? <laughs> That's one problem. The other is, have you looked at this thing? Edge highlighting? It's all edge tiny tiny edges. It's worse than space marine armor. I don't think I have that kind of steady hand. So once again making it up as we go along just dry brush it for now. That is get paint on the brush then mostly get it out of the brush again until it's almost dry. And then carefully draw it over any and all surfaces with its flat edge always perpendicular to any cracks so the hairs don't go inside and paint the bits we want to stay dark. Speaking of dark, we get in some darker bits as contrast later, that ought to help. Also, I might strategically touch up some of the edges. Have to see. Not all of the mech is supposed to be covered in white paint though. Most obviously, some parts should show that they're made of metal. And I will be going the lazy route here. There is a never-ending argument if you should paint metal bits with shiny metallic paint or if you should paint the shine by hand using normal colors, as you would with a painting. No shiny metal print here. I've done this a few times, mainly to try my hand at it and to paint directional lighting, but it is very easy to just use the glitter paint and be done with it. In most cases it looks good enough. And that's my two cents. Apart from the Thug's obvious two PPCs, I'm also putting paint on any prominent joints. And on these riffle things, be they heat vents, tubing or what have you, it looks good to accentuate them. Also, 
the missile launchers. I want to make the weaponry stand out a bit. Looks better, now that there's something to contrast the white. More of that. Let's throw some grey in there. I'll put some on the snout. The backpack-like structure. And the feet. Because I've previously seen that on a Comstar paint job somewhere and liked it. Also, never feel wrong to change your mind on anything. For example, after holding the Mini a while, I think that these piston thingies should also be metallic. And I decided after the first stroke of the brush not to paint this part grey. Ah, fix that up later. Next, I want to take a thin brush and paint on undiluted white highlights. Although I'm not sure yet how to make them best work. I'll start out by trying edge highlights. Notice how I tend to steady my brushing hand against the model with one finger. My hands are often a bit shaky. This synchronizes that and allows for cleaner lines. I just need to be careful not to smush anything. This works, I think. Holding it in hand, the model seems a little clearer. But not fully sold on this yet. I'll leave it like this for now. Maybe try something different on the later mechs. The grey parts are too flat though, so I'll dry brush them with metallic paint. Also, lazy habit, I sometimes use the back of my hand to see if the brush is dry enough yet for brushing. This stuff is easy to wash off and it's much easier to judge on here than on flat white paper. Finally, paint the cockpit blue and dot the PPC with white blue to match the effects we paint over our videos. Those And put a little bit of black wash carefully into every nuke where I accidentally painted them over with brighter paint. Or where I decide the lines need to be darker still. Some final touches. A highlight on the blue PPC and we're back to dry brushing with white. I'm still not happy with just the highlights. So I'll do some final touch-ups. You rest there for now, I'll get the rest of the Comstar Mix started.
And that's those for now. I'll do the bases later, all in one go. Time to do the red chasseurs max. And get better contrast apparently. Black max, white background. Seems a bit much for the camera to handle. Darker paper it is. There we go. Oh, I've also spray coated these sometime during the earlier painting spree. We'll start out once more with dry brushing. Only this time with grey. After all, uninterrupted black would leave these looking a little flat. If I wanted a really clean, new paint job kind of look on these, I would go with edge highlights instead. <laughs> but once again, that's not the look I'm going for. It's time consuming and I'm too lazy. This is essentially the same process as with the white dry brushing, only I don't need to be as careful about it. And I have more paint on my fingers by now, sorry about that. Again, metallic paint on the weapons and several other fitting bits, such as the spider's jump jets. Then, to give the mech some more definition, I decided to do a few highlights with lighter grey. Honestly, I am not sure how noticeable it is, but I feel a bit better about things afterwards. And finally comes the new and interesting bit, for me at least. Painting on the decals. Having a bit of trouble keeping it in focus, but the work process is actually rather simple. Paint outlines where I want the flames. Fill the outlines. And then paint a smaller, brighter inner flame with orange paint onto the red. The fun part here actually is that I get to decide where I want to put the flames. All I have to go on is red and orange flames leaping and twisting up the right side of a mech, according to the unit color compendium. So I get to put them where I think they look the coolest, whilst being easy enough for me to paint. Finally, these also get the tiny details filled in, such as jump jets, cockpits, and weaponry. There we go, all the mechs are finished. But their bases are not. I will be using these for one specific battle. Afterwards, at some point, I'll probably strip them again and repaint them. These things are expensive-ish, often out of stock, and I want the option to vary my settings. So that's not a forever paint job. I've tested this before starting, carefully on the leg of a mech I've got twice. Sterilium will be my way to go there. It strips the paint, but it doesn't dissolve the plastic. But that's at some point in the future. Thing is, when doing basing now, I don't want to do anything I can't reverse so no gluing stuff to the base. On the other hand, I know where the battle is taking place, so I want the base color as close to the battlefield's color as I can get it. Which means it's mix-in time! Some brown and off-white to start with. The dark. Time for a side-by-side -side look. Nope, too red. Little drop of water so it doesn't dry on me. 
Hmm. Hmm. Close. A bit dark still. Also, I'll be needing more of it. More. This I can work with. And now it's just necessary to get all this done before the paint has a chance to dry. The white bases are easy enough. The black bases will need two coats before the base coat will stop shining through. Dry brush some dust and grime on with the same color. Stuff always looks a bit more tangible when there are layers on the layers. Only the rim of the base is left. Those will be used to show who sides which max. Red for mine. And green for, well, green's max. No more fiddling around with stickers. Paint on a bit of yellow to indicate which side is the front. Done and done. And that's that. Now to clean all of this up, I guess. Coffee first. And to bring things full circle, by the time I'm finished editing this, we will probably finally have had that fully painted game I was itching for. But that is a story for another day.